Today's Mad Monday pedal day. And the postman's just arrived. Let's see what's inside of here. We've got some bubble wrap. So let's keep going. Oh, look at this. What's that say? What's that say? Look at that. Look at that. Still got the plastic on. It's brand new. They retail at Guitar Guitar for £115. So let's play it. So I'm using my Mexican 2016 Strat, Lake Placid Blue, become one of my favourite guitars. Uh, I'm using my Lion 6 valve amp, that's my favourite amp of all time. Uh, just a little background about the wire pedal. Uh, the Dunlop Crybaby Wah pedal um, is sold on the shelf today. Um, they do the standard version and they do they do all these different versions, you know. Uh, Buddy Guy's signature version, they do Van Halen's signature versions, uh, Slash's version, but basically they all play Crybaby Wah pedals at some point of their career. Uh, Buddy Guy, is uh, one which is known for the Dunlop Crybaby Wah um, and still plays it today. And um, the difference between the standard one and then the classic one, which is a lot more money, is £115. It retails new from Guitar Guitar. The difference is uh, it's slightly different in sound. It's a bit warmer compared to the standard one and also it's true bypass as well because a lot of people use a wah with a fuzz pedal and the trouble with fuzz pedals they don't like a buffer in front of them uh, unless your fuzz pedal is buffered already then you shouldn't have a problem but I've always wanted a true bypass Dunlop Crybaby wah because they're built like a tank I love uh, Dunlop um, MXR, I just think they're great, a great brand. Uh, there's lots of great brands, of course, but um, you know, uh, a bit of history about the Dunlop Crybaby. Um, back in 1966, when it was invented, um, Thomas Organ uh, was the first person to make the Crybaby wire pedal. Um, and they got the wah sound uh, from a trumpet originally. Um, that's how it became about. And uh, the first wah pedal to ever to be invented was like I said, 1966. Thomas Organ was the guy who made the first batch in 1966. Uh, Crybaby Dunlop wah. And he also uh, owned uh, the Vox company who made amplifiers as well. Um, but yeah, the, the, the first wah is the crybaby from what I know. Um, if you know different, then, you know, please comment below. But um, 1966 was when it was first mass produced, the first bulk of them in California. Um, and um, Obviously, uh, the first person to make it really popular uh, was Eric Clapton, believe it or not, uh, from Cream. Um, not Henrix. Um, Henrix, um, the, you know, there's a bit of myth uh, that Henrix never used a wah until like uh, till mid 1967, which is true um, on live performances and stuff, but. He did, he did buy a Crybaby Wah, definitely, uh, at some point, either early 67 or late 66, but he never really used it live until, obviously, summer, uh, just after Monterey, actually. He started using it live. Um, I think the first concert he used it live was the Seattle Theatre in 1967. Um, yeah, and he obviously used it on Catfish Blues. Um, but um, yeah, which was an early creation of his uh, classic Voodoo Child. 
uh, Muddy Waters, you know, that, that's where Voodoo Child comes from. It comes from Muddy Waters stuff. Um, so, yeah, um, basically, the first person to make it popular was Cream, uh, Eric Clapton. You know, he started using it when it first came out. So, Henrix, um, obviously, was a big fan of Eric Clapton and Cream in America in 1966, before he was famous. And he, he actually used the war on a recording he did with Curtis Knight. Can't remember what it was called. It, I think it might have been called UFO or something like that. And it's just him jamming, you know, going wow, wow, wow. And I think that was the first time Henrik ever used a wah pedal, but it wasn't his wah pedal. It was probably one he borrowed or somebody else's wah because he didn't have a lot of money back then to buy gear. Um, but yeah, he did use the Crybaby wah uh, early on in his career, Henrik's did, and then later on switched to the Vox wah, which became famous and it became on the scene in 1967. Uh, the Vox came after. So from what I know anyway, but if this is all wrong, then please comment below, but I'm sure this is all correct. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get on with it. So yeah, this is the wall pedal. I've got a bit of drive on the, the amp. Um, yeah, I've just got in a cheap power supply, but it can run off a battery, or if you get a good power supply, then it'll be even better for you. <laughs> And definitely um, yeah it sounds like the classic wild pedal it's a bit warmer than the original one like I told you and I can definitely hear the difference it's very sharp the standard one the standard one you get with the buffer inside um, it's very very sharp sounding this one um, I don't know I've never had an original one but it sounds very Clapton sounds very Henrix to me and um, so this is probably more like the more like the original wah this one uh i wasn't i'm not sure if the, the original wah was true bypass but it must have been because uh back then there was only fuzz pedals around and and uh well henry's got a good tone putting his wah first before his fuzz so he obviously did both as well but um yeah but or oh, they could have been modified as that as well but um, I like it. There is, uh, there is early pictures of Henrix playing a crybaby. Uh, I've seen some. Um, they're hard to find, but definitely there. And um, if you listen to recordings like Burning the Midnight Lamp, you can definitely hear it's a crybaby, not a box. Now, if you listen to Machine Gun, The Isle of Wight, you can hear the difference when he starts to play the Vox Wah. It's definitely more, it's definitely, it's definitely maybe a bit more warm, warm sounding, um, a bit more vocal as well, um, the Vox. Um, yeah, uh, Steve Ray Vaughan used a Vox, definitely used a Vox War. Um, not sure if he used a Crybaby, he must have used one as well. There's photos as well somewhere uh, around early 1967. Um, stuff like that. And he had stacks of fuzz 
basses and tone benders and stuff uh, Hendrix used to have on his on stage and and I'm sure there was one where there was a wah there but he never used it really until like mid 1967 that's when he started using the wah so uh, he was very good at catching on new uh, effects you know uh, as soon as he heard Eric Clapton started you know using it and stuff and other people maybe as well started using the wah uh, he was straight there, you know. Um, yeah, he's just so original, wasn't he? Um, but yeah, so I love it. I love Eric Clapton as well, but I um, I, I love his early stuff, you know. So um, yeah, so like and subscribe if this video has helped you. Uh, tune in for uh, Mad Muddy Pedal Day. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a pedal each Monday. <laughs>